And furthermore, this, this also requires that um, between those base stations, so the entire, uh, the entire surface of, of uh, the entire surface of the city, let's say, has to be covered with these cells. <coughs> so as long as two base stations are sufficiently far apart, then they can't be adjacent. As long as they're sufficiently far apart, they can use the same frequencies. However, all the cells in between those two cells must use different frequencies. Yes. What about the overlapping overlapping areas? Um, so the idea, the idea, is, uh, the reason, one reason why we use these hexagons, why we draw hexagons. You can just draw a straight line to the area that So, yeah, you're you're right. So I mean, um, if you're inside this cell, uh, there will be a certain area within the cell where you can still see the signals from uh, uh, from the space station. So it is not necessarily true that uh, you would be able to reuse these frequencies just one one base station over. That's that's actually a design parameter. We'll talk about that in a second. Yes. Is there a reason why space hexagon? Why do six? No. Um, good question, though. No. The reason why they use six is because, so um, you can divide space into cells like this. The reason why they use six is because usually what uh, companies will do is they'll take these cells and further divide them. They'll divide them into three sectors like this. And within within each cell, they will do further, they will do further spatial division so as to further reuse that's uh, that's beyond what I what I want to get into. Um, okay, so the fact that we can reuse frequencies from space to space or from place to place uh, leads us to parameterize a cellular telephone system two ways. So we will have what we call reuse factors. Factor is basically the size of the reuse pattern. So here are a couple of examples. And this will be figure two. Um, I'm going to give you, these tend to be hard to draw because they have a lot of hexagons in them, so I'm going to give you the two smallest ones. Uh, the two smallest ones are firstly, reuse factor of four, in which case we have all frequencies are assigned over groups of four cells. <coughs> like so. So let's assume that we have um, a, a total of, um, I don't know, let's say uh, 100 megahertz available. In the bandwidth, in the range from let's say 800 to 900 megahertz. So if this is my reuse pattern, what I might do is to base station type one, I will allocate, let's say, uh, so I have four base stations, which means that over this, um, the, the entire 100 megahertz will be devoted to this entire cluster of cells. So in each cell, I will I will allocate 25 megahertz. So uh, uh, base uh, cell type one, I might allocate 800 to 825 megahertz. Cell type two, I might allocate 825 to 850 megahertz. Cell type three, I might allocate 850 to 875. And 
and sell type 4, I might allocate 875 to 900. So each of these adjacent cells is using a different frequency band, so they won't, they, they will not interfere with each other. So what you had, question? Yeah? Shouldn't you be able to use the same frequencies for cell 1 and 3? Cell 1 and 3, yes. So um, they are, they're not directly adjacent. But um, the idea in specifying such a cluster is that there should be a minimum distance between cells, and perhaps cells one and three would not satisfy that. Because you're going to put that cell up against itself over and over again, right? Uh, so one yes. and three will end up adjacent to each other when you stack them, when you start. Exactly, them exactly, exactly. So if I took, let me, let me draw it over here. Guard band, guard band, yes. Um, so I did not indicate that here, but yeah, generally you would allocate uh, a few hundred kilohertz in the guard band to prevent, to further prevent them from interfering with each other. That's right. Yeah. 